Welcome to the Open Bedroom Podcast. I'm your host, Jennifer Kalo. Welcome to conversations about open relationships, online dating, conscious uncoupling, and creating the relationship that truly aligns for you. If you enjoy this podcast, I hope that you do a couple things for us. Would you subscribe? Would you write a review? Maybe share us with your friends. And if you extra, extra like us, there's a link in the show notes here for my Patreon that does help pay for the creation of this podcast. And lastly, follow us on The Open Bedroom. We are on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. I hope you enjoy the show. Hey there, I love to tell you about my Patreon account. So as many of you know, as things become more and more censored, it's harder for content creators like us to stay live on these amazing platforms like TikTok and Instagram and YouTube. So what I've done is our spicier content now lives over on Patreon. We currently have some really fun episodes up, like how to give amazing blowjobs. I also just recorded and uploaded my night in a dungeon with a dominatrix. What can you expect? Weekly episodes and weekly content, some of it being sex ed, some of it being story and erotic telling, like I just did with my night in the dungeon, some of it being more podcasting where we have a guest on. So for an entry price right now of $5 per month, you can hop into my Patreon account and check it out. Check the show notes below for more information. Hope to see you there. Bye. Hey guys, it's been a little bit since I have been on and done a solo episode, but it is time. And so today I want to talk to you about creating a three hour sex date. Now, I'm sure the first thing that you're thinking is like, oh my God, why would I want to have sex for three hours? And I want to say, oh my God, why would you not? This concept started for me about three years ago. Oh God, maybe 10 years ago, not three years ago, three hour sex day, 10 years ago, when I first started following Kiminami. Kiminami is this spiritual sex coach out of Canada. And she's the one that does like the vaginal Kung Fu. <laughs> she like sticks things up her vagina, like entire, like long boards that you would surf on and like has a chain and she can like hold it. That's how tight it is. She's amazing. And so I started following her about a decade ago when I was spending a lot of time in Vancouver and for some reason she came onto my radar. And so for all these years, I've been studying her work and I'm like, I think this lady is amazing. And let me say that a decade ago or for even the past decade, I had no idea how to actually do a three hour sex date, but that's one of her either programs or one of the things that she talks about a ton is like how to have gourmet sex. What does that mean? So what I wanted to do today is kind of break down how to have a three hour sex date and what does that look like? And I want to add in, this includes layers of emotional intimacy and emotional connection that makes this really juicy. So let me start by telling you my story. Hi, I'm Jen Kalo, Jennifer Kalo. Um, just call me Jen. Only my clients call me Jennifer. That's weird. Uh, so I'm Jen and uh, I have had two marriages that I would never say were unsuccessful, that were there for a period of time that served me and served my partner. And last year in February, I exited my second marriage and sent him off into the wilderness. He's happy. He has a fiance. He's getting married next spring. Um, she's thrilled. He's thrilled. I'm thrilled. Everyone's thrilled. I have been with my partner, Scott, now for almost two years and over the course of these two years, I have been in and out of open relationships. So my second marriage, we opened up our relationship. It was November of that year. So almost two years ago. And when I, um, when I got on the dating apps, Scott, my partner now, he was like the second person that I connected with on, um, on the dating apps. And he was also one of the first men that showed me what mature adult sex is like. And if you're listening and you're like, what does that mean? Um, I'm going to talk about that today. Mature adult sex is gourmet sex. It's having sex, not like a 16 year old. 
16 year olds, when they have sex, they are driven by these primal urges and the guy just wants to stick his penis inside the woman and get off. And then he's done. And then he moves on with his life. He doesn't think about her pleasure. He's not concerned about how many orgasms she's having. And he's definitely not doing anything before or after to get her ready or complete the sexual setting. Gourmet sex is spending time, maybe even an entire day, warming up your partner, really understanding their sexual blueprints, which I'll elaborate on in a minute. And then at the end, closing the session with beautiful aftercare. So everybody's nervous systems get to come down and be regulated before you move on to the next thing. So as I started to experience men outside of my first husband and my second husband, and I started to have two, three, even four hour sex, I was like, what is happening? Like, what is happening in my life that I am getting to have this most amazing experience? And it was the thing I craved for eight years in my second marriage, for a decade in my first marriage, this connection, this juiciness, this taking time, this getting me ready, this multiple positions, this multiple sessions within your session of sex. So let's jump right into what is gourmet sex and how do I have a three-hour sex date? So I broke it down into sections of foreplay, actual penetrative sex, and aftercare. So let's start first with foreplay. Foreplay is the thing that starts the minute that you wake up next to your partner or the minute that you wake up as a single person, knowing that you're going to be having a sex date later on that afternoon or evening, and you are connecting with your partner. Here are a bunch of different ideas for foreplay. This is what I'm calling out of the bedroom foreplay. There's also in the bedroom foreplay. So this part one is outside of the bedroom. How can I warm my partner up? Cook dinner together. This could be making a charcuterie board and snacks for in-between sessions. This could be using a massage table. I highly, highly, highly recommend buying a massage table to use in your sexual practice with each other. We didn't have one until maybe six, six to nine months ago. It now lives in my living room, uh, right in front of the fireplace. The fireplace is shut down for the winter or for the summer, I mean, but I'll be quickly turning it on for the winter. It's wonderful to get massaged next to the heat. Um, I bought mine from a local massage therapist and I just started asking when I'd go get massages, like, do you guys have an extra older bed I could buy? Does anyone have an extra bed? And eventually I got to who I was looking for and I, I got to, I got to, to purchase one. Um, we use the massage table for actual massage. We use it for sensual toys. We use it for hot wax. We use it all the time for so many different reasons. So I love, love, love our massage table. And you can spend a good hour on one person and then take your second hour and then do the second person. You can also fuck on a massage table. Maybe not uh, on it if you're, you know, not a hundred pounds, but you can use it to bend someone over. You can lean against it. You can do an assortment of things. Here's another idea, an adult game. There's all kinds of fun adult games out there and they're so much fun. You can uh, buy buy a sexy adult game and just play with each other. Um, and it starts to just get like really sexy, really fast. So maybe get on the internet, look up some adult games that you can purchase to play with your person or in a group setting beforehand. Um, watch a show together and mindfully keep your hands wandering. Scott is so good at this. When we first started dating each other, um, we would, he would invite me over to come stay at his house and he would pick a movie or pick a show. We, um, we ended up watching the entire, all the seasons of the expanse on Amazon. If you're into space, um, this is like the coolest show. It's really well done. And so, 
I mean, he just kept like luring me back for like dinner and sex and for this expanse show. (laughs) And so the entire time that we're watching it, we're cuddling on his sofa. His sofa is not really deep. So we couldn't like spoon together, but he would sit up, he'd have me lay down and I would typically be on my back. And then his hands would just wonder (laughs) like the entire time. And I'd be so horny and turned on by the time that it was over that we would go fuck immediately in his room. So that was really fun. So these are all of my ideas outside of the bedroom. A few others that I would add into is sexting is really fun. Um, Sending like naughty pictures to each other is really fun. Um, Some ways that I've done that lately, Scott had an internship this summer and it was the first time that we were separated. Like in nine months, it was the first time that we weren't waking up next to each other. And he was going and leaving at like four or five o'clock in the morning to get to work an hour South to go do this job. And I would wake up hours later and be sexy and horny and I would wear some sort of like cute outfit to bed. And so I would wake up and the sun would be shining in and I would just like take a selfie of my like sexy sheer lacy outfit. And I'd be like, man, I wish you were here so I could, you know, to snuggle up with you or get naked with you or I wish you'd peel this off of me or whatever. Um, Fill in the blank. Sexting is also a whole lot of fun. Um, So add that into your foreplay. I want to stop here since we're still outside of the bedroom and do my plug for the erotic blueprints, which I do almost every solo episode, because I feel like when we're talking about sex and we're talking about intentional sex with our partners, we have to understand what sex is most needed Um, most desired, makes our partner feel the most loved, and that all of us are different. So there are five erotic blueprints, just like there's five love languages by Gary Chapman, but this is not the same thing. The love languages with Gary Chapman make your heart feel like your partner loves you and they're doing something that feels aligned and in love with that part of you. So it's acts of service or gifts of words or affirmation or physical touch. The erotic blueprints are when you do this thing to me, it sexually arouses me. So we hear a lot of times partners saying, my wife is never turned on or my wife never can have orgasms or why does my wife never want to have sex? Same thing for husbands. And so what's happening is you're speaking a certain erotic blueprint and your partner is speaking a totally different erotic blueprint and you're doing yours to them and they are like, what the fuck are you doing? So here are some erotic blueprints. Um, sensual. So that's touch, that's smell, that's scent, that's sight, that's evoking the senses. And an easy way to know this one is if your partner puts food in their mouth and they're like, ah, it's like a sexual experience in their mouth. They are a sensual. So they need you to do sensual things to them to get them ready. A great example from my list here, get them on a massage table get them on your bed, buy a waterproof waterproof splash blanket that's used for sex, have it on the bed or near the bed and have them lay on it and give them a massage. It's super easy. When you're done, you take it off the bed, throw it in the washer, done. So I want you to touch them, to feed their senses, even maybe feed them foods that are super yummy, raspberries, strawberries, blueberries, um, the chocolate with like the caramel inside that kind of like just drizzles and explodes in your mouth. Like that's the kind of thing that makes your sensual so turned on. Okay. Sexual no brainer penetration equals love and turn on. I'm a high sexual, um, kinky. So if you're a kinky and you're trying to express, um, Hey, I'm going to turn you on and you're doing weird kinky shit to somebody who's sensual, they're gonna be like, what are you doing? Why are you hitting me with your hand? Or like, why are you pulling out a butt plug? Or like, what is this thing with the nipple clamps? Like, I just want you to rub oil on me. (laughs) So a kinky person wants anything that's edgy in sex, anything that feels edgy to them. It could be sex outside. It could be the nipple clamps. It could be the butt plug. It could be a paddle. It could be, um, you know, light choking. It could be any of these things. And that turns them on. 
Kinky is my lowest blueprint, but it's the most interesting to me. And I noticed that the more I work with that kinky, the more I get super turned on. Like one of this thing lately that Scott's been doing is instead of like spanking my bottom, he'll like tap and spank my nipples. Oh my God. It's so good. Try it. The last one, let's see, we did sensual, sexual, kinky. And what am I missing? Kinky, energetic. Okay. This one is, is I find this much more with women than with men that they're energetic. This is you lock eyes across from the person in your room and you feel that like zing of connection and your panties get wet or your cock gets hard because that zing just happened and all you need is to look at each other. Um, another example is sexting is a really good energetic thing. So they're getting that visual maybe of your, um, you know, your hard penis and your underwear, or like you go to the bathroom and you might be hard and you snap a picture and your wife's like, Oh my God, or your male partner. Um, Sexting also is very much words and copy. So as you're um, connecting with your person and you're telling them like how much fun you had the night before and how you did this thing and they did this thing and you like relive it or you're, um, you're doing foreplay with them. And so you're like, tonight, I want to try this new thing. I'm going to wait till you're really blah, 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 fill in the blank. And then I'm going to do blah, blah, blah. And then you're going to come so hard. That is great to do with energetics. Energetics, I think, are also the most kind of confusing for people. If they don't have a lot of energetic, they're like, I don't understand. Like, I just put my penis inside of you and we're good. And the energetics are like, no, I need an all day burn. So I told you I'm a high sexual. I'm actually a shapeshifter. So that's the fifth one. It means you're all of it and you want all of it and you want more of all of it. And when you take this quiz, which I'll have the link below in our show notes, take the paid version because it'll say out of all five, here's how you rank. And I'm pretty high equally on all three, except for the kinky, which I told you, which is my lowest, but I've been working and I think I'm getting that one higher because I'm really starting to play with it. Scott is a energetic sensual, meaning he needs... To the energetic connection. He needs touch. He needs me multiple times a day to come by him and put my hands on him. And he sees at his desk. He wants hugs. He wants snuggles. And that turns him really on. Um, and so it's really important for me as a high sexual to understand that he's needing a lot more connectivity throughout the day to warm him up in order for us to have sex later that night. Okay. That's the end of my erotic blueprint spiel. I know you guys have heard it a lot. If you haven't done the quiz, I'm telling you it will change your sex life. Okay. Mm. Now in the bedroom foreplay, here we go. Toys. So these can be sensual toys. Think feather, think scratchy towel, think um, scratchy nails. Those are great. Um, think other toys like vibrators, paddles, um, nipple clamps, all of those are going to be toys that you can bring into the bedroom that prolong the foreplay before you get to penetrative sex. Oil. Oh my God. Oil so good. We use coconut oil and it's funny because sometimes people are like, Oh, why do you use that? It'll mess up your pH or it's actually, you know, not the best oil to use. We just use a lot of it and we use it and it works for us. Um, it works for us. It works for our girlfriend. So we go to Sam's club. I buy the huge organic bucket. <laughs> it's like six or $7 or something. It's like under $10. And then I keep two smaller containers, like little Tupperware containers full. And then like once a week or once every other week, I just fill it up. It's really easy. We use it for massage. We use it for lube. We use it uh, for nipple play. We use it for like anything. You can also get it in your mouth. You can use it with blowjobs. It is freaking awesome. I'm not telling you that you have to use coconut oil. If you're allergic to coconuts, by God, do not use coconut oil. You can play with other lubes. I have not found another lube that's not sticky that lasts as long as coconut oil. Um, also, the male penis 
and shaft are actually really thirsty. It's weird. You'll put lube on, on it. And then like a few minutes later, like you need more lube. Um, I had a, my friend Sierra Booker, who is on a lot of my Patreons. We do a lot of like anal sex conversations and toys. And we're about to launch a masturbation conversation over on Patreon. We talk a lot about lube and the male penis, the male penis, there's only one, right? And the penis and how for some reason it just needs a whole shit ton of lube. So feel free to keep using coconut oil. That's why I use these little to-go's. We have them on the bed. I can reach for it. Scott can reach for it. I can use it on him. And then as soon as he starts to get dry, I just put even more on and that refresh feels so good. Okay. Cock worship is another great foreplay. This could be that you uh, do hand jobs. This could mean that you use your mouth. This could mean that you um, use tapping sensations. Um, as Scott's been playing with my nipples more and with doing that kind of spanking sensation, I've taken it and started playing with him and with kind of the head of his penis and he likes it. So try it, try your inner thighs. Um, there's so much that you can do with cock worship and it can be a whole experience in itself. When I do it for Scott, I do his entire body and then it ends with his cock. And a lot of times if it depends on what he wants, either I'll finish him with my hands, I'll finish him with my mouth, or if he wants to be inside of me, uh, I'll, obviously I do that for him as well. And when you're doing a cock worship, normally there's no expectation that you're going to get anything in return. If we're adding this into a three hour sex date, my next one's pussy worship. So maybe you spend 20, 30 minutes just worshiping and giving him tons of stimulation and fun with cock worship. And then he reciprocates with 20 minutes of pussy worship. You're already 40 minutes in. Okay. So pussy worship, same thing. You could get toys out. You could get lots of yummy oils. You could go down on her. You could, um, you could, uh, do edging, same for him. Like edging is super fun. Get him really close to orgasm. Stop. Start all over again. Get him really close to orgasm. Stop. Start all over again. Um, if you're into BDSM or kink, this is a great place to add in some of that. Um, I also have in here, my last foreplay and the bedroom idea is build a scene again, back to BDSM and kink. Super easy to build a scene that takes like a good solid hour that has nothing to do with penetration where you're, you know, spanking, flogging, clamping, massaging, um, doing like mind fuckery where you're kind of dom, you're dom subbing and you're making your sub think that you're going to do things like you know, you're pretending to do knife play, you're scaring them a little bit, but it's exciting and exhilarating. I wish I had my toys in here. <clears throat> I just bought what I'm calling like vampire nails. I don't even know if vampires have nails, but like those long, scary kind of like Halloween nails that you put on. I bought them at a sex shop and they're so yummy and they feel so good. That could be really fun to play with your sub or to play with your partner. Um, so building a scene can also add a lot of time into your sex state of just playing and having fun. I think that's all I want to say about foreplay. All right, next, moving into sex. So let's pretend that in your three hour sex date, we're equally distributing our three different sections across an hour each. So an hour of foreplay, and this could be combined with, you know, outside of the bedroom foreplay, inside of the bedroom foreplay, then we move into sex. So for a full hour, here are some things to extend your sex, penetrative sex. Okay. So first one I have is just go slow and enjoy it. My favorite thing as I get older is I want super, super slow penetration. So in other words, Scott will go inside of me and I'm like, I want you to be really slow, like super slow. And I'm sure that this is kind of difficult for him but I don't really care. <laughs> and so we just practice, you know, how can he stay hard for a long time? So he can, and then I might um, also like fuck him 
with from my angle so like we're both moving and I get to really control the pace where he's like really slow I love making love slowly because there's something about the body that all of a sudden gets more aware um so example like inside of my vagina if I'm going re he's going really slow it's almost the outward movement that I feel the most. If you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, try it. Try it the next time you have sex. Go slow, like think about a snail. Maybe not as slow as a snail or a sloth, but go really slow. And then you can build to more. But I think, again, back to 16-year-old sex, we're used to just like, you know, hitting it hard and really fast. And we think that that's the way we're supposed to have sex. And instead do the complete opposite. Maybe start with your partner up here by their face and just trace their face. Close your eyes. See if you can memorize every single line, their eyebrows, the indentation on their forehead, their nose, their lips. Maybe stick a finger in, play like touch their tongue. Let them suck on your finger. That's really hot. Go to the neck. Go behind their ear, go to their clavicle, move slowly down, go to the nipples. You get what I'm saying? Okay. The next thing that I have is change positions. Like how guilty are we of having sex in the exact same positions? One time it's 20 minutes or less sex and you jump off and you go do do whatever else you're going to do. I want you to change positions. So maybe you start with uh, your partner on top missionary, and then you move to cowgirl. She's on top. Then you move to reverse cowgirl. Then you move to he's bending you over and you're in doggy. Then you like, how can you almost make it like a dance? I don't know. It's hard to imagine a dance and sex happening, but like, see, like make a game out of it. How many different positions can you get to before everybody's coming (laughs) before orgasms are happening and see if you can prolong sex that way. Like you don't get to come yet. I'm going to now change positions and have you try something different. Another idea I had, which I did talk previously in the foreplay is edge each other. See how close you can get to orgasm and then stop. And then see how close you can get with your partner and then stop. Um, oh, one thing I missed with foreplay in the bedroom is mutual masturbation is crazy hot. You can do this through toys. You can do this with fingers. I love watching Scott touch himself and he loves watching me touch myself. And it's also really educational because you're like, oh, I didn't know you like to like stroke yourself like that or dip your fingers in your vagina. Like that's so hot. Um, or play with your vulva in that way. It's so yummy. Try mutual, mutual masturbation. So another thing for sex, I have use your fingers. Scott is the master of fingers and getting me off with his fingers. Um, A lot of times before he ever penetrates me, he has made me come five to seven times just with his fingers alone. So really play with that. And I've noticed as a woman having sex with other women that just, let me see if I, oh, I do. Y'all, I was like, do I have my puppets? Okay, hold on. Let me put the clitoris back inside of our vulva. Okay. So here's an example of what I have found that works really well with women too. So I'm going to pretend like she's this way and I'm above her. If you take the palm of your hand and you apply some pressure and you just kind of grind your hand on the clitoris and on the vulva, on those lips, and you get into kind of a rhythm where you're pushing on the clitoris like this that gives a really nice orgasm. Um, another thing, like I'm thinking about what I've done recently. Women actually love a lot of stimulation outside of their vulva, not necessarily in the vagina, but sometimes I like to stick, I can't really do this one, but I like to stick a finger in and then maybe play with the clitoris, 
right? Or use your fingers or your thumb to just move it around and then pay attention to your partner. What noises are they making? Are they breathing heavier? And then you can kind of figure out, okay, they like the circular motion. They like, <laughs> my clitoris just popped out. Or they like up and down or they like back and forth. And those are some great ways to use your fingers. I feel like it's not that difficult with guys. You just play around with the stroking, play around with, um, when you're using your fingers, play around with like, what are some different ways that I can move my hands? Is it more circular? Is it up and down? Is it more with my, I do have a puppet. Okay. <clears throat> Is it, let's pull this foreskin down. Okay. Is it more, um, that I'm using my forefinger and my thumb more, especially when I'm doing something like this, I really play around with this compression feeling. Um, sometimes I might swirl. So just play around with your hands, play around with all of the different feelings. Don't forget their balls. Uh, what else do I have? Use your mouth. Yeah. Nothing better than going down on somebody. I had one of my most favorite use, well, I have two really favorite use your mouth. Okay, I have a lot of favorites. I love um, <laughs> sitting on someone's face is really fucking hot. And that's a fun position that's different if you haven't done that in a while. The good old fashioned 69 is also really fun. I had a partner that was really good with 69ing with me. And so hot, so hot. So play with all of those things. And then the last thing that I have in this, in this group of, again, we're only doing this for 60 minutes, right? <clears throat> Go a second and a third time. Hang on one second. I need a drink. Okay. Go a second and a third time. So you've had sex the first time, cuddle each other. Run your fingers along the other person's skin. Give them some time to kind of recalibrate and then go a second time. Um, I've been really guilty lately of we have sex, then we do aftercare and then we're done. But I'm noticing that like when our girlfriend's over, we may all go a second round or every now and then Scott and I will go a second round. And if I'll take the time to just play with him again or go back down on him again or use my hands on him again, nine times out of 10, he's ready to go again. And then you just start all over again. It's really fun. The last part of our three-hour sex date is aftercare. And a lot of people have been like, Jen, what is aftercare? What are you talking about? I don't understand. <clears throat> aftercare is what you do the second that sex is over. 16-year-old sex, like... <laughs> moves the person, moves their partner out of the way, jumps up, puts her clothes on and runs out the door. Okay. We're not 16 anymore. Um, I had a, uh, I'll just say partner. Cause if I say husband, it's too specific. I had a partner who would literally, I'd be on top and he would literally move me off of him. The second that he was done coming inside me, the minute, the second <laughs> done. Turn on the TV. You know, felt so discarded. Um, I've had another partner. Okay, I'm just gonna no, I'm gonna leave it as partners. Y'all can understand what I'm saying. I had another partner that a second that we were done having sex, he would also jump up and then go to the sofa to fall asleep and to leave me to clean up myself and all the toys and whatever else we had done. Also made me feel very discarded. So be very mindful that you're not making your partner feel discarded or um, not unimportant. Um, and here are some easy things that you can do, okay? Just snuggle with them. You don't even have to do anything. You just lay there, put your arms around them. Daddy spoon, mommy spoon, baby spoon. Like you decide who's the spoon and just hold them. You can pet them, like pet their hair, pet their body, not in a sexual way, in a calming way. Try that. Shower. Mm, so delicious. I had never had a man shower with me until Scott. I know this is insane. I'm almost 40. 
Scott was the first man who put me in the shower and literally washed every part of my body and my hair. And I cried. I was like, this is the most loving thing anyone has ever done for me. So this is a great thing. You can even add this one to foreplay. If you want to be super squeaky clean before sex, shower with your partner, shower all of their body, wash all of their body, including their hair. Scott has recently started letting me do his beard. And I love to like make it all soapy and feel it feels so nice. <clears throat> I love the shower thing. Um, a soft towel and wiping your partner down. This is our most often go-to, the very first thing that happens. So as soon as we're done and we can move again, Scott usually gets up. He gets a really soft hand towel out of our bathroom, puts warm water on it, wipes himself off, and then comes and wipes me off. And he does like the hot water on one half of the towel. Then he uses it and gets in every crease, every crevice, makes sure that I don't have coconut oil down my legs, that nothing's, and then he takes the soft dry side and wipes me all off. That's super sweet. Then he usually comes back and holds me for a while. Um, another great one is if you have a hot tub, naked hot tubbing, we love to do that. We might, uh, he might wipe me off. We might snuggle for a little bit and then we'll go out to the hot tub and just enjoy being quiet in the dark in the cool, under the stars. It's really nice. Um, snacks. So remember in our foreplay, we made a charcuterie board. <laughs> this is a great time to have snacks and rehydrate and just kind of come down from that high and get your body back, you know, into nutrition and just like rehydrated. A movie in bed. So I would probably do the towel technique, do the snuggle technique for a while. And then if you decide, you know what, this feels really good to be just naked and wrapped in each other's arms. Let's watch our favorite show together before bed. Great time to do that. Uh, my last one is this is also a great time to have a sleepover. So if you are not married and your person, you know, lives somewhere else other than your house or your apartment, <clears throat> have a sleepover. That's a wonderful way to end the night. Again, super, you could add, you know, the shower cleanup after that, um, and add any of these things on, add snack time, hydration time. Do we want to go get in the hot tub? Uh, do you want to just be washed off? Do you, all of these things for me are very sensual. And so I have cuddling and touching. If you're not a cuddly or touchy person, choose the things that work for you. Like, okay, we'll have snacks and then we'll go to bed. <laughs> we don't have to touch each other, but I love the touching thing. Okay. I hope that this was helpful and I hope that you feel confidence and empowerment that you can carry on a gourmet three hour sex date the next time that you and your partner get naked. All right. For more information and juicy conversations like this one, head over to my Patreon. It's $5 a month. I think my friend Joe Levitt says something like, it's for 79 cents a day. I don't think it's exactly 79 cents for less than 80 cents a day. You can be over on my Patreon and weekly I have conversations just like this one. I also have another coach who specializes in sex toys and sex education. She comes on at least once or twice a month to talk about that sort of thing, or we can actually get out toys and show you how things work. Um, and it's just, it's a place where I'm not going to be censored. And right now I have violations on TikTok and Instagram. I think I have one on YouTube and I am pretty careful about even the clips that I show from these podcasts or from Patreon it's just censorship is everywhere. And so in order for us to get around it, we have to be in a safe space like Patreon to fully have conversations like this. So I hope that you'll join me over on my Patreon. Again, it's seven day free trial. Outside of that, it's $5 a month. It's a place where you get really intimately close with me. I don't mean naked. I just mean in my inbox where you can say, as one of our patrons recently did, hey, Jen, I have a question about... Um, emotional intelligence and emotional connections after sex. My partner and I have sex. I, you know, and then he immediately jumps up or I jump up and there's no being together afterwards. So hopefully she also hears this and the aftercare portion is helpful for her. 
Um, the other last thing I want to add is, would you also stop and share this podcast with someone, share it on your Facebook, share it in your Instagram and be sure and add a link to it. This podcast is growing but it's pretty slow growth. And my goal is to double or triple the number of people that have access to this kind of educational content. So would you share it with a friend? Um, would you subscribe to this podcast? It really helps in the numbers when I have a high number of subscribers. It also helps you not miss an episode, which then again helps me. Um, so if you like it, review it, subscribe it, and share it. Those are the four things that you can do for me that are free that help me continue to publish this podcast. And then lastly, I do want to make content that you find interesting. So feel free to DM me on any of these podcast platforms um, with a request for a not so racy episode. Um, and then you'll find the rest of the racier episodes over on Patreon. Thanks guys. I hope you have an amazing day. Thank you for sticking around and listening to all this. Good luck. And I hope you have amazing gourmet sex.